This is a quick video over the not so not so number. Now the not so number is actually a ratio. It is the and it's usually written as in u. And it is the ratio of heat transferred, so q dot due to convection. Oops, convection over q dot uh, conduction. And remember, q convection is due to maybe fluid flowing past. Let's say you had a ball and it was some temperature, and you and you started flowing a fluid across the ball. And the fluid would be some temperature T1, and the ball is some temperature T2. And as the water flows past, it would pick up some of the heat and transfer it away from the ball. That's convection. And conduction is when you have a block that's some temperature, T1, and you put it next to another block that's another temperature, T2. Now, there's no moving parts. It's just the heat diffuses across, or into, or however you wish to think of heat movement. It just it crosses into it, but none of the uh, atoms or anything are moving. It's just they're stationary, and the only thing that is transferring is the is heat. So how can we calculate? How do you calculate Q convection? So Q dot convection. It is equal to. Whoops. It is equal to H times delta T. And remember, H, H is the convection heat transfer coefficient. Convection heat transfer. Transfer unit. Oh. unit and it varies from from liquid to liquid and how fast that liquid's moving but the units of h are watts per meter squared degree celsius so now we have what q convection is what's q conduction q conduction it is equal to it is equal to k times the change in temperature over the length and k is it is dependent on what the material is so uh, if it's water it has its own if it's steel it's different and metals t tend to be the have uh, very high K values versus gas. Gases are just, are maybe just like insulation tend to have very low K values. So let's say you had two boxes. This one's at T1. And instead of having, um, instead of having right next, them right next to each other, let's put another box right between them. And this is T2. The length that we discuss is this length. So if we were to make this longer, the heat transferred across would be less. And that is conduction. It's just heat transfer. There are no there's no molecular movement across anything. The molecules or ions or whatever they may be, they're still in the or not ions, but they're still in the exact same area. Or yeah, ions too. So they're still in the same area. So if we were to combine these into the ratio that we said what the Nuxle number was, which was right here, if we were to do that, we said that we said that the Nuxle number is equal to the Q convection over Q dot conduction. So if we put in Q put this in for Q convection, we get H times delta T over, 
with putting in now this for Q conduction, K times delta T over L. And what we see is the delta L's cancel, and this flips up over here. So what we get is the Nuxal number is equal to H times L over K. And remember this L? That L represents this a length something a length of something like this. That is the Nuxal number at its most basic. There are a ton of equations that you can use to calculate the Nuxal number, but the concept is Q convection over Q conduction. So maybe let's say you had a maybe something like a heavy, heavy oil. The convection the convection by that heavy oil would be relatively low. Most of the heat transfer across that heavy most of the heat transfer from the item to the oil would be due to conduction. So if we had if we had maybe a tube and we tried flowing some heavy oil oil heavy very heavy oil it would be laminar and we'd see that it there'd be it'd be something like this so this is a laminar so we do have our fluid flowing through but again the, due to the viscosity of this you wouldn't really get these convective forces like you would for water where the water may be turbulent and it's just flowing around all over the place it's getting eddies generated so it's mixing really well and with water you'd have a very high convection and maybe a low conduction so the Nussel number represents how how the heat transfers so if you have a high Nussel number that means you have a high convective force a heat transfer due heat transfer due to convection versus heat transfer due to conduction or if you have a low Nussel number that means you have very little heat convection and a lot of heat conduction that is a that is a Nussel number and it's most basic